back to Red Glasses Talk. The title today is Be Priority Driven. Let me tell you, living priorities is one of the keys to having a fulfilled life. Not a cluttered life, not a hectic life, but a, an organized life. Uh, functioning at peak performance. So we're talking about Be Priority Driven. Matthew chapter 22, verses uh, 37 to 39, Jesus was asked by a religious lawyer, what's the great commandment? And Jesus returned the man and said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Love God first, number one, before everything else. And then living that out and actually realizing that and how we go about our days is key. It's just not saying, I love God, yet and go on and operate the way we want and ignore how he wants us to operate. So we said the first commitment then is a personal, progressive commitment to Jesus Christ, having a dynamic relationship with him. We said, and under that, you've got to, first of all, make sure you're plugged into Christ, that you have that relationship with him, that he lives in you. So what makes a person a Christian? It, it is does does sitting in a pew in a church make you a Christian? Well, not really. No more that you sitting in your garage makes you a car. No, that doesn't do it. Is do I get in on the family plan? You know, my granddaddy and my great granddaddy and grandma they were Christians, and so I guess it just kind of slips up my leg and boom, I'm a Christian. No, you don't get in on the family plan. How about uh, just doing good things? You know, I. I have a good heart, and I try to help people, and I give money, and I support different things. Uh, is that, that doesn't do it either. Bible says all your good works are filthy rags in God's sight. So how in the world does a person make heaven? How do we know that we're plugged into him? Let me ask you a question. I wish you were here. To, I'd love to visit with you face to face, but here's the question. What makes an orange tree an orange tree? Think about it. What makes an orange tree an orange tree? People say, well, it's the fruit. No, that's not what it makes it what it is. Well, it's the leaves. No, that's not it. Well, it's the soil. Sure, the soil, the sun, the water, all that's important. In other words, there's something in the seed of an orange that makes it what it is. You might call it DNA, whatever the proper terminology would be, but there's something in it that makes it what it is. What makes a pine tree a pine tree? Pine treeness. What makes an orange tree an orange tree? Orange treeness. What makes an oak tree an oak tree? Oak treeness. Something in it that makes it what it is. What is it in a person that makes them a Christian, a follower of Jesus? Answer Jesus. And if you look in Colossians chapter number one, verse 27, the scripture says this. The mystery of all the ages before Christ came on this planet, the mystery, that which was held back, but which now we understand, that mystery has been solved. The mystery of all the ages is Christ in you. When Jesus invades your life, he makes you a Christ one, a Christian. So we need to make that clear, and you've got to always understand that that's a key thing. So... As we know that he lives in us, then we've got to be in the word, we've got to be in prayer, we've got to be in church, and we've talked about some of these things in past times. Number two priorities of personal progressive commitment. Oh, let's see what the Bible says about that. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. But the second commandment is like unto it, that you love your neighbor, how? As you love yourself. And so we've been talking about what it means to love you. It's a critical statement. And we said that you will only be able to love others to the degree you love yourself. And you will only love yourself to the degree you know how much God loves you. And then we said, if you really understand what he thinks about you, you need to take care of yourself. And so in Luke 2.52, the same areas, and you might want to check that passage out, Luke 2.52, the same way and the same areas Jesus grew as he was developing and growing up 
are the same areas we need to develop in to take care of ourselves. We've been talking about the intellectual area, the social area, the emotional area, and the physical area. Obviously, the, the spiritual area, that's priority number one. And here's a thought for you. Life is basically lived in relationships, and the health of your relationships will pretty much determine your overall personal health and well-being. Relationships are everything. So, priority one, your relationship with the Lord. Priority two, relationship with yourself. Priority three, uh, your relationship with other followers of Jesus. The focus here is with other believers, with other people that are Christians, with others that are followers of Jesus. And so this is going to involve a number of things, a number of categories. It's going to obviously involve, in general, other people that are followers of Jesus. It's going to involve your marriage. It's going to involve your parenting. It's all around people and the relationship with one another, those who are committed to Jesus Christ. This is a big one. So the question is, as I close today, why is our relationship with other followers of Jesus so important? Why? Well, if you go to John <clears throat> chapter number 17, the night before Jesus goes to the cross, he prays to the Father. And this is what he prays. Listen very closely. He says, my prayer is not for them alone, talking about the 12 disciples. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. You know who that is? You and me. If you've come to know Christ, literally Jesus was praying 2,000 years ago, and he had your name in mind. He had my name in mind. He said, I'm praying for those who will believe in the future, that all of them, all those who believe, may be one. I Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us. Why? So that the world, non-believers in Dallas, in whatever your city in, may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one together, right relationships, as we are one. I and them, you and me, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world, the non-Christian, know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. The number one way that the Lord draws people in the world that don't know Christ to himself is as those people in the world who don't know Christ see people like you and me and how our relationships are dynamic and different because of Jesus Christ. Oh, we're going to have fun the next few weeks talking about this. But nonetheless, are you plugged in? If you're plugged in, you're part of the family of God. We'll talk about that more next time.